It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. In this episode, we've got a lot of great things to cover for you. We're going to talk about retirement uncertainties. There's a lot of things or variables in retirement that you can't predict. We're going to tell you how to plan around those things. We're going to talk today about financial propaganda. There's a lot out there in the media this week on the inverted yield curve, low interest rates. What's that mean for you? What are the risks in your portfolio? And we're going to go into our mailbag. We're going to answer some questions about everything from how to plan for your Social Security, your pension, putting it all together. And we're going to talk about risk in the portfolio. What's the right amount of risk for you? How do you plan for that as well? So stay tuned. We've got a lot of great information to cover. That's this episode of No Pain, No Gain podcast. So Bob... When it comes to planning for retirement, or if you're retired right now, you need to construct a plan that deals with the unpredictability of a lot of different variables. For example, a big one is like, how long are we going to live? We won't really know. How do we plan for that? Right. You really have to bring up how long I'm going to live on my birthday. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up your mortality today. My apologies. All right. Apology accepted. But here's the thing. You've got to think about that because it's the biggest part of your planning is how long are you going to live? And then because of the investments in medicine, right, we're living longer. And if you're going to live longer, it's going to cost more to stay alive. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I mean, think about it. If you're 60 today, we really have to plan for another 30 years. That's a long time for your investment portfolio to keep up with how much you're going to need to live on on an annual basis. Because the big two big enemies you have, Bob, are cost of living are going up inflation. And the longer you live, that means there's higher risk of more medical costs which needs to be a lot more things you need to fund. Are you uncovering a conspiracy here, Ryan? The medical profession is keeping us alive longer so that our expenses go up so we have to pay them more. I mean, I think we're onto something here. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely a conspiracy going on here. But that's the fact of the matter is, you know, as long as you live, the longer you're expected to live, the more it's going to cost to live, cost of living goes up. And you just can't think about yourself. You'll have to think about your spouse. I mean, what happens if you're not here? So, you know, life expectancy is a big uncertainty. And it's certainly something you need to address in your financial plan. Yeah. Another big one, Bob, that's talked about right now a lot is interest rate changes. You know, we're sitting at historical lows in interest rates, and that can be a big problem when you're planning out your retirement in your portfolio because you need to generate income. Well, you know, Ryan, when it comes to interest rates, you think it's pretty simple, right? We went up in yields for 35 years, and now we just declined for 35 years. So what's the next 35 years going to bring? <laughs> Hang on, let me get my crystal ball out. Uh, <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, but the problem is, because rates are so low right now, you can't just depend on having your money in CDs paying 2% or a money market fund at 2% where you pay taxes on that. You got to have income coming from different sources. They're going to keep up with the cost of living. And let's face it, Bob, right now, you have to be really smart about how you're generating income. I think it's one of the biggest risks in portfolio strategy today, right? In your portfolios right now, you have what I call the portfolio weapons of mass destruction that advisors have been putting in your accounts, and you've really got to do something about it right now. Portfolio weapons of mass destruction, Bob, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> that sounds that bad. Means, that means those dreaded bond funds. You know, you have bond funds that invest in long-term bonds where rates have declined to the point where you're barely getting a return above inflation. And invariably, inflation is going to come back, interest rates are going to rise, and you're going to lose a ton of money if you don't get out of these things right now. The other thing is having low interest rates makes you do things you don't want to do. And that can be reaching for yield with some of the lower quality things like junk bonds or high yield bonds, things that can really blow up on you down the line. These real estate investments that have been sold that have really high yields or dividends, Bob, but we found is a lot of times these investments can unravel very quickly. Yeah, one of the biggest risks of low interest rates rise that you end up reaching for yield. And as uh, Ray DeVoe used to say, more money has been lost reaching for yield in your portfolio than at the point of a burglar's gun. <laughs> well said, well said. So it's really important to understand you know, where the income of your portfolio is coming from and if you're generating enough income for retirement. Another variable that we can't really predict 
is what future tax rates are going to look like, Bob. How the heck do we plan for that? That's always a political football. No, it's not. It's very simple, right? Tax <laughs> rates are going up. When you look at the state of New Jersey, the state of New York, the state of Connecticut, they're dealing with unprecedented deficits. And, and you know what their solution has been every year, invariably? Taxes more. Yes, tax more. So you can't control what these politicians are going to do. What you can do is control how your portfolio is taxed. How do you do yes. that, right? Exactly, Bob. And it's a really important point here is it's not how much you generate on your portfolio. It's how much you take home after you pay taxes on your portfolio. Right. So you really got to sure. look at so, where you can optimize. Yeah. So, you know, invest in municipal bonds where there's tax-free income, right? Have a tax-efficient portfolio. Don't have active mutual funds where they pay out capital gains every year, right? There are dividends that have better treatment. There's lots of ways to make your portfolio efficient and again, keep that money in your pocket where it belongs. Exactly right. And that's where annuities can be very dangerous because you get this income stream for life, which that sounds so good, but that income stream is typically taxed at very high rates, which can end up being a really bad deal for you, Bob. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight, Rye. There's people out there telling you to take money that you've already paid tax on, put it <laughs> into an insurance product that's going to pay you income that's going to be taxed at the highest rate again. It's true, Bob. <laughs> it's sadly, it's true. Horrible deal. Horrible deal. And, Horrible. The, and the reality of it is, like you said, Bob, I mean, you can't control where tax rates are going, but being very proactive at how you structure your portfolio for taxes can be a huge benefit and can be a lot more money in your pocket now and through retirement. So it's so important to do that proactively. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we'll look at everything. You know what? It's the only review you'll ever need. All you need to do is gather all your statements, stick them in a folder, put them in a shopping bag. You don't even have to open them. Bring them in. We're going to review everything with you and build your own 360 financial portal that allows you to become financially organized, where you'll be able to view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience. And more importantly, we're going to break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. We're going to make certain that you're diversified, that there's, we're going to reveal those hidden risks. You know, risks are something you only realize in hindsight. Let's have a little foresight and get this analysis done. We're going to look at your cost, your fees. You know, there's a lot of hidden costs buried deep in that insurance contract or the prospectus of that mutual fund. Why be overcharged by your own investments? You know, let's be certain we can reduce those costs and take that money out of your advisor's pocket, put it back in your pocket where it belongs. And income. You know, we all need income in retirement. We all have a gap in income when we retire. And if we're retired, our number one goal is to stay retired. So let's be certain we have that repeatable, dependable income stream that your portfolio can generate. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan where we'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or is your money going to outlive you, utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for 45 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. 6692. That's 844 752 6692. Or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week? Who are the biggest offenders of financial propaganda? All of them, right? <laughs> all of them. There was no news in the media, financial media this week that was was good at all. It was just all 
profane. It's just it's just a plethora of things they make you worry about. They, you know, there's always uncertainties, and they take these uncertainties and make you think that they're certain. But I'll tell you, the one I've been hearing most from you has been about the inverted yield curve. You know that there's an inverted yield curve, and it's going to cause a recession. It's tell it's you know signaling a recession, so you better get out of the market right now. <laughs> Yeah, so let's, let's break down what the inverted yield curve means. And in, in simple terms, it just means that the yield on a 10-year treasury bond is actually lower than the yield on a short-term one- to three-month treasury bond. And historically, it's the opposite. It means the longer you go out in a bond, typically get a higher yield. And that's usually an ominous sign that the economy is going to roll over and people are fearful, if I say it correctly. Yeah. That's exactly right, right? So it's that basically that you can get the same rate of return in a three-month bond as you can in a 10-year bond. In terms of investing, that's one thing. But in terms of really calling that a, an inverted yield curve, well, it's only slightly inverted. It's like three basis points, three-tenths of 1%. And when it really comes down to predicting a recession, yeah, every recession in history has been preceded by an inverted yield curve, but sometimes it happens a year or two years before the recession. So in terms of timing, not very good. No, and I think it also takes attention away from what I think is more important right now and what people don't talk about enough, and that's the economy is in a really, really good shape, Bob. We have the lowest unemployment we've had in 50 years since the swinging yes. 60s. People's wages are going up right now, and Americans' net worth is at the highest level it's ever been in history at like $108 trillion of net worth. You know, these are all really good signs. These aren't negative signs about the economy. Not at all. And, and when you really think about it, we're in a global economy. So what really matters isn't the U.S. yield curve. It's the global yield curve. And when we look at the global yield curve, it's never been more positive. Rates are almost non-existent overseas. So when you look at a 2% 10-year treasury, that looks like a fat yield, you know, to somebody sitting in Europe or in Asia or in Japan. So the idea is, you know, that uh, there's one indicator that can predict or ignite fears of a looming recession. That's just financial propaganda and something you should ignore. And what you want to realize is that low interest rates are great for stocks and you should be fully invested. Yeah, that's right. And I think also in the big picture, too. You know, you got to look at a lot of different indicators. To your point, Bob, you can't just look at one. And when you have lots of good indicators out there about the economy, another one I'll mention too that came out this past week, but doesn't get a lot of headline, is the Small Business Optimism Index, which also hit an unexpected high this past week. And that just means business owners like you and me, Bob, we know what our pipeline looks like the next 12 months. It's really good. But business owners across America all feel the same way. That's a really good sign for the economy. Yeah, they're like the, they're, they're the boots on the ground, right? They're the ones that are experiencing the you know business on a day to day, minute to minute basis, and if their optimism's rising, that means we're not heading to a recession. We're heading to a booming economy. That's right. That's right. Well, I found another article this week in the whole world of interest rates. Again, everything's about interest rates right now, which are kind of boring. Like he wants to talk about interest rates, but Jim Cramer of Mad Money, uh, who's hmm. Wrong a lot. <laughs> we had to be honest <laughs> about it. Came out with a prediction this past week that he expects the Fed to cut interest rates come their meeting this summer, July 30th to 31st. And this goes back to what we've been talking about a lot by this conventional wisdom is everyone on Wall Street now believes that interest rates are going to go lower. I know. It's, it's such a dangerous thing, right? To try and invest on anticipation because predicting what's unpredictable, knowing what's unknowable, is just impossible. So, you know, to depend on one man's opinion of where rates are going to go is not the way to invest in your portfolio. Yeah, and we talked about this earlier on the show, and I think this is a really important time to look at your portfolios because a lot of money this year has not gone into the stock market, which has done really well. So you think money be going there. It's been leaving the stock market and going into bond funds. And if you listen to our show, you know we don't like bond funds, and I don't think you realize the risk you're taking in those bond funds right now because rates are so low right now, Bob. It's almost like I have the rubber band and I'm pulling it way, way back, and eventually at some point it's going to snap. That's like your bond fund because if rates start to go up, those prices are going to come down dramatically on your bond portfolio. There's so much risk in a bond fund right now, right? Number one, you know, not too long ago, we were at 3.25% of the 10-year treasury. If we just go to 4%, 
that bond fund that's sitting in your 401k, in your IRA, in your account right now is going to drop 15%. And that's a safe investment. And you're telling me I could lose 15% plus. That's a pretty scary thing. So those bond funds are not safe at all when you look at it from that perspective. You could lose a lot of money over the next couple of months, especially if rates start to go up. Yeah. And if the economy does deteriorate, if we are going into a slowdown or even a recession, you know, the majority of bonds, corporate bonds, for example, are just at the investment grade level. And if they get downgraded, if they go down one level in quality by the rating agencies, all those portfolio managers that manage your bond fund are going to have to sell. You know, right? It's like yelling fire in a theater. Everybody's going to run for the exit at the same yes. time. And when you everybody's selling at the same time, what happens to the price? Price is going to go down precipitously. So right now, it's such an important time to really look at your portfolio. You know, we talk about this a lot, but you need to understand what you own because your point, Bob, when you start looking under the hood of things like these bond funds in your portfolio, there's a lot of low quality or what we call junk bonds that could really get hurt quickly if the economy slows down or if interest rates go up. It's like heads you lose, tails you lose. And right, this is what this is why we do this segment every week because financial propaganda is so dangerous because people act on it. Over the last year, believe it or not, with the market up almost 15% year to date, 35 billion has come out of the stock market and gone into the bond market. And that's what financial propaganda makes you do, it makes you make bad decisions emotional decisions, and it's very dangerous when it comes to your financial health. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a really good question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. We answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And to help us with our questions, we have our producer, Dan Irving, on the line here. Dan, what's shaking, man? Hey, Ryan and Bob. I got to say, I'm a little disappointed in the turn that the weather has taken this past week. I uh, was all prepared for the dog days of summer, and now the temperatures have dropped, and it's like, I bought all this ice cream, and I have no reason to eat it. <laughs> I mean, I can always find an excuse to eat ice cream, Dan, so I can't relate to that That's at true. all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got some great mailbag questions today. Uh, the first one is from Hannah in Greenwich, Connecticut. She says, Bob... I'm supposed to retire next month, but I haven't done any planning at all yet. I just realized that I still need to figure out my social security options, pension options, Medicare options, as well as what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Should I push my retirement date back until I figure this stuff out? Hey, Hannah, this, you know, when it comes to any journey, you know, the most important step is the first step. And, and what you need to do is take that step right now. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't retire until you do a plan, but you've got to sit down and do some planning because how you take your social security, you know, how you take your pension, whether you take a, a spousal benefit, signing up for Medicare. And if you're 65, you better sign up for Medicare because if you don't, there's a big penalty. So whether you're going to take it or not, you have to sign up. But right, what is the smartest thing anyone can do when it comes to their money right now? I think right now, first thing you have to do, we, we talk about planning, but I think this is where having like a 360 portal somewhere where you can do some sort of what-if scenarios on the fly, right? I mean, it's all about looking at all the different variables, putting them together so you can optimize things like, for you, when's the best time to take Social Security? It's probably not the same as, say, Bob or somebody else. You need to put these variables together to find that optimal place to figure out what you take and when you take it. 
you know, 40 years ago, Rye, I created a process I call the A to B approach, and it applies to everybody. You know, you need to know who you are right now at point A. You need to know what you have in investments, what's in savings, uh, what are your passive income streams. You know, these are all things you can look up, and you have to know what they are. And then point B is what are you trying to achieve? You know, do you want to stay retired or do you just simply want to retire and run out of money? You want to be able to stay retired, right? You want to be able to educate children. You want to be paying for weddings. You want to be able to pay for your vacations. Well, the nice thing is once you articulate those goals, then you can come up with a plan. You can come up with a strategy where you know exactly what to do. And Hannah, this is not something that you need to do. It's something everyone needs to do. And everyone needs an A to B strategy based on who they are right now. All right, Hannah, thank you for writing in. This next question is for Ryan. It comes from Chuck in Summit, New Jersey. Chuck says, Ryan, I'm not retiring for another five years, so I don't feel the need to be ultra conservative with my money. But my wife keeps insisting that she wants to be more secure. Just how secure do I need to be at this stage? Okay, well, this goes back to what Bob just talked about, a plan. And our philosophy is let your plan dictate how much risk that you actually take in your portfolio and what I mean by that, Bob, is I remember this, I think you told me this story once. They interviewed Shaquille O'Neal when he was in the prime of his career. He was making all this money. And this interviewer asked him, you know, so what are you doing with all that money? How are you investing it? And Shaquille O'Neal said, man, I'll put it in treasury bills. And the interviewer was like, why treasury bills? I mean, that's a really safe, boring investment. He's like, man, I've got more money than I'll ever need. Why take more risk than I need to? And I think that's the question you have to ask yourself, Bob, is like, why would you ever take more risk than you need to take? Take the risk that you actually need. Hey, Rye, that's a great point. But you know what? Not everybody has Shaquille O'Neal money. I wish we did. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seven foot two and I don't play basketball in the NBA. The other thing is that sometimes you have to take risk and you need to take, you know, modest risk to achieve your goals because some of us need to grow our capital. We need to overcome inflation. And that's the whole purpose of what we call our A to B process is to determine what's the optimal strategy for you to achieve your goals. Now, right, it's not something where it's just set in play, right? You can't have a strategy where you set an asset allocation and then you, uh, you know, go on vacation for 30 years, right? It's got to be proactive. It's got to be interactive. And it's something you have to address at least on an annual basis. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly right, Bob. I think it's about having the optimal amount of risk because many of us are guilty of the opposite. You've been sitting on way too much money in cash the last couple of years, earning very little return, and you may need that growth for retirement. But hey, 10 years from now, you may need less growth on your money because you're 10 years older, you're further into retirement. So adjusting that risk periodically is key to that that as well. So you gotta you gotta figure out where your risk is, but readjust it based on your goals as they change over time. You know, you don't want to be precisely right because you know what's the opposite of being precisely right, right? Precisely wrong. Yeah, and there's the, that's you know that's a buzzkill, as you say. You know you don't want to be wrong, so it's having a process where you only have to be approximately correct that gets you from point A to point B. And I'll tell you what, Chuck, just like Hannah, now is the right time to do that. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. This is a holistic review which will update all of your financial information in real time, whether you're looking at it or not. More importantly, it'll display on your homepage all the key goals of life, all the key elements of achieving those goals, and more importantly, report to you daily how well you're progressing towards those goals. And all you have to do is gather all your statements, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone or text, and make an appointment, because we're going to take all that information and break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you truly diversified? You know, Wall Street talks about diversification ad nauseum, but let's be certain that you don't have too much of a good thing, that you have enough investments in different baskets, you know, to overcome the volatility of the markets, to give you the highest probability of overcoming inflation, taxation, and achieving those key financial goals of life. Let's look at your cost. You know, a lot of hidden costs in portfolios. There's a lot of, you know, fees that are buried deep 
in the prospectus of those mutual funds or those annuity contracts. Let's take some of those fees. Let's take some of that income and let's take those fees out of your advisor's pocket, put it back in your pocket where it belongs and income. We all need that dependable, repeatable income stream to fill that income gap once we retire. And if you're retired right now, you know what your number one goal is? Let's stay retired. And cash flow is the critical element of that strategy. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we're going to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for close to 45 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.